It's time to talk about your favorite NFL team. See it up there? Wait, wait, where is it? There it is. The New York Jets. All right, so uh, let's talk about the Jets. I already put a video out a couple of weeks ago, uh, maybe about a month ago, actually, uh, talking about the uh, top coaching candidates uh, that I still feel very high about uh, if the Jets are going down that road. I know there are some uh, candidates that are not on that list that are considered, including Mike Vrabel. We're going to talk about Mike Vrabel on this video. But we're also going to talk about uh, the uh, the, – the fix, the real fix uh, for the New York Jets and for fans out there um, that are just dying uh, for some sort of uh, help. And, and I get it. I really do. And that's why this uh, particular situation is going to be very important uh, for what the Jets decide to do. Because if they get this wrong again, I just, no, no, no Jet fan even wants to go down that road, even think and fathom what could happen. Because basically that would just put you in a situation where you would lose another, what, three to five, five more years. Uh, and they just can't even think about it. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try to be on the positive side and uh, think that, okay, they'll get it right. They look, Woody Johnson was here and uh, Chris Johnson was here when they, when they got it right before, you know, they went to back to back championship games with Rex. Um, you even go back to the Bill Parcells era, which was uh, very, very uh, uh, profitable. Uh, Championship game opportunity, halftime lead at Denver, couldn't get it done. So uh, there have been some success stories here, uh, but it's been a while. And uh, it's time for another one. So I think that's what we're going to get. That's why I'm very happy to hear the news about Woody going out to an outside firm, the Tannenbaum firm, uh, to try and find a general manager. What I believe that really needs to be done, though, uh, for the Jets to succeed is they have to find somebody to run the team. And this is where it really all starts. Now, whether or not they can do that, I don't know. I know search is for a general manager, uh, but I, I, I don't know if, if, if there's more to it. And I hope there is because I don't know whether or not they can build a successful long-term program here unless they find someone at the top, someone to run the organization, a football guy. And I know it's been talked about. Tons of videos out there, tons of writers, articles about the Jets not hiring a football guy and you know who are these guys. And, and if you look at it, matter of fact, if we just take a look at the Jets, we just pop up uh, their front office, you'll see here that First of all, I find it really funny here at Wikipedia that out of all these, usually the guys that get the links are the guys that are known. They got, you know, they're big backgrounds and they've got some sort of a uh, resume. Well, two of the biggest positions in the organization have no link. That shows you where the Jets are. That shows you who these guys are. I mean, Elhai, Jaime Elhai, the president, he's been with the team for 25 years. And the CEO, the COO, Friedman, um, has a business background. So these are guys that really, they do not have football backgrounds. And that is exactly what is being talked about within the, you know, outside the organization is they, they must bring in someone with some sort of a football background. Other people are like, nah, they don't really have to do that. You take a look at other organizations and look, there are a few a scant few that have had some success without that sort of structure. But there are reasons for it that we're going to get into, which is why I do believe that if, and look, it's going to be my even prediction, okay? My prediction, not what I believe, my prediction, I guess it is what I believe, is going to be that they are going to hire Don Aponte. That's my prediction. They will hire Don Aponte, and, and I am okay with that. Now, if anybody knows me, really knows me, they would be very surprised to hear that. But I don't see Don as a like a figurehead, like somebody that would be hired just because she's a woman. And when you look into her background, 
you find somebody that has a credible background as credible as any background that you would want for the position. And so therefore, I don't care whether Dawn is male or female. doesn't matter to me. And because Dawn did work with the Jets, has some ties with Tannenbaum, I believe that I just got this feeling that that's the direction they're going to go. And I hope it is. Now, I can't tell you whether or not I am for Dawn Aponte general manager. Okay? Now, maybe if Dawn Aponte becomes general manager, but she hires someone that basically fills a similar position and that does a lot of the general managing duties, sort of like Dawn will have the title, but in reality, someone else with scouting experience is picking the players and making the deals, and she's basically approving it all, sort of like, and again, I, I honestly would rather have Dawn Aponte as someone to run the organization, like a president. Now, will they you know, do something here with Heine or Brian? Well, I hope so. Why not? See, the problem is, is that it's the Jerry Jones problem in Dallas. I had an interview with RJ Ochoa. You can check out the interview on our lads, the RLEDs football channel. And I had an interview with RJ, who is with Blogging the Boys, uh, knows the organization up and down, and talked about how, because I asked him, I said, what's up with Jerry Jones? Why did he have such a quiet offseason? Why, why is he doing this? He knows how to run a team. He did it successfully before. So why is he running it this way now? And the answer was basically, well, Jerry feels he's doing nothing wrong. And if you look at the business side of things, the Dallas Cowboys are the most successful, profitable organization in sports. So as far as Jerry's concerned, he's just doing right. He, he's Why mess with that? And that's the problem I think we're dealing with here with Woody. Okay. See, Woody wants to win. Woody's spending money to win. You may not like the decisions he's making, and, and he's not a Badinsky like Jerry Jones. So don't even go down that road. And you could do a lot worse than Woody Johnson. I'm telling you, you can. I know it gets blown out of proportion because the Jets have had so much losing, and the Jet fans can be, you know, negative. And it's New York, but the fact is, is that while he is not anywhere near the best owner, he ain't anywhere near the worst. Okay. The fact is, is that there's a lot of good intentions there with Woody, but he just needs to make the right call. And the right call is he must cede some power with on the football team to somebody. Okay. He has to. And if he doesn't do that, it would be a lot harder for the Jets to be successful. It doesn't mean they can't be. Okay. As I said, I mean, they, they, they three times championship game and those were good football teams. The Jets had matter of fact, the team, Everybody thought the Jets were going to win the Super Bowl the year after they lost to Denver, the AFC Championship game. That was the Jets' year. They were the team to beat. And then we all know what happened to Vinny. So it's not like they can't win. It's about winning, but building a culture and making sure it's long-lasting. And you can only do that if you hire someone to run the team that doesn't have to be the general manager. But if that's what it takes, fine. If you're going to hire a general manager and that GM comes in and says, look, I'm not like, all right, let's bring up Ray Agnew. Okay, everybody knows that if you're going to hire uh, Johnson with Detroit, that Agnew will probably come with it package deal if you need a GM. Okay. So that's what it would look like with the Jets. Okay. You hire Agnew, you bring in Johnson. There you go. Matter of fact, you could do the same thing. And it doesn't only have, it doesn't have to be Johnson. Let's say Johnson says, I am going to stay here and I'm going to stay here and I, and I think I'm going to be here for another few years. Well, you could turn to Tanner Erkstead. Matter of fact, we can go down right here to Detroit. You can turn to Erkstead and say, well, Tanner, Engstrand, excuse me. You could say, Tanner, well, I don't want to be here for the next two or three years when I got other teams saying that I might be able to be an offensive coordinator somewhere. So it's very possible that that's what could happen. You could you, you don't have to hire Agnew and Johnson if Johnson just is happy where he wants to be. But maybe Agnew ain't. Maybe Agnew wants to be a GM with full control. Well, you can hire Agnew. 
But then the question is, does Agnew not, I mean, does he want not full, not only full control as a GM, but does he also want full control basically of all the football decisions? Like the, I'm the one making the call here. And that is going to be the telltale. Okay. Now they might still make a really good hire and the higher hires a good offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator, depending on where the coach background comes from. And it might still look like, all right, you know what? It ain't the prettiest picture. It's not what we wanted, but it's better than what it could have been. And we might have to come up with that final analysis when, the, when, when it comes to that. And that might be the case, but to hit the home run, okay. To hit the home run, You've got to hire someone. Like, let's say Don Aponte is being interviewed. Don, and let's say it's not just about the GM role. Let's say Don is going to come in here or someone like Don with similar uh, credentials and say, look, I need to run the team my way. I'm the one that has the last say. Now, if you want to have some sort of say, like 49%, I'm all right with that, but I get 51. If not, I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to come to this organization. And then when it comes down to it, you get to make the final call on all this. Now, I'm okay with the financial part. If if we need money, that thing that I'm okay with. Okay. It's not my money, it's yours. If I need money, I'll ask you. If you want to give it to me, great. If not, I'm all right with that, but everything else has to be up to me. And we can only just hope that that exact, that's how it works out. So again, let's say you hire Ray Agnew, Johnson stays and you, all, you can go to Engstrand. You go, all right, bring Engstrand in. Well, then I'm okay with that. That's okay. And maybe Agnew gets the kind of a power and authority that we just talked about. All right. So, what I want to do is run through, because I'm going to give you some examples here. And we're not going to go through them. I, mean, I don't know how many you would go through, but because there's a few things I want to do here. This is one. All right. So we talked about having football people in big, big parts of the organization, big decision parts of the organization. So what is it? Like, why is it that this is what the Jets need? Well, because if you look at it, let's just go through some. All right. So like here in the division, you have uh, – here's 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 some examples. Okay, see, here you got the Pagulas, but the Pagulas are the owners, and they run the team. That's why he's the president, but he has a background in sports. So this is what the Pagulas made their money on, sports, and, and they got that background. Uh, and I have no problem with that. Matter of fact, they came from the NHL, the Buffalo Sabres. So he's got a background in sports. Cool. All right. Because that's what we want, a background in sports. Miami. Uh, they're uh, right here, Garfinkel, their president. He has a baseball background. He was a baseball executive. You look at the Patriots and, of course, owner Robert, son Jonathan. And what you're going to see here, there are, or, there are so, some organizations you got the Patriots, you have the Bengals, okay, because their their president, who the position. I'm just going to say the position. It'll be president, but it could mean the position we're talking about, authority, full authority position. You look at the the uh, Patriots. You look at the Bengals because uh, the the guy who runs the team learned from his dad. I mean, like the one of the pioneers in the industry, Paul Brown, Mike Brown. Uh, you also have uh, Pittsburgh, and you know how the whole Rooney family, the whole background there, okay? And there you go. We got the president, Art Rooney, the Rooneys. They know what they're doing, okay? You know the Indianapolis Colts are run by Ursay. I mean, he's the guy. He runs the team. Now, is that good? No, it's not. It is not good. This is what I'm talking about when I say it could be worse. Well, there. this is where it could be worse, because okay, Jim Irsay just gets too involved and he just doesn't have anybody to tell him what to do. All right. And that's why the Colts are not in a good situation. Uh, but then you have other organizations with backgrounds where you've got guys who've come from, I've got one that was an NBA president. I have one that was, um, 
has a background uh, in uh, baseball, uh, former baseball president. I got one that had uh, 25 years of experience in pro and college sports. Um, and then you also got the other ones that was just going through with Cincinnati, where you have others that uh, like Las Vegas. Well, we all know that uh, uh, that Mr. Davis, he, he, he's, he learned from his dad and he runs the team. He's the guy. Okay, so and, and there are others like that went through the Roonies and so forth. The same thing. Um, so y- you've got those ties. There's always going to have that background where, you know, there's some sort of long lasting relationship with the owner in some way, shape or form. There's a relation, whatever. And so I've been here for 20 years learning on the job. And see, that's great. That's fine. OK, um, but that's still not something the Jets have. But there are some teams that. Uh, again, like I mentioned with the Colts, that's not really what you want. Um, and, and other situations where uh, I think, look, uh, Tennessee, I mean, they had a weak, uh, their president has a weak resume. But if you look at it, should it be a surprise? Because the person who took over the team was Bud Adams, been a long, been, of course, been an owner for a, a while, uh, been in the NFL for a long time as an owner. He passed away and uh, his daughter took over the team. And then this is the situation. You know, you hired someone that does not have a, like, a, so even, so you can see what I'm, what I'm doing here. And it's not because it's, she's a girl. It's just because there were, there were some people where you could see that they were left at the organization. They're the owners now, but they're not making the right decision. Whereas Detroit, boy, did, boy, did she make the right decision? And this is something, matter of fact, Jeff Risen is going to be my guest. I'm going to interview him on the RLS Football Network in a few days. Talk about the big game this week with the Bills. Uh, Sheila uh, Fordham, boy, did she make some great calls. Really great job as far as figuring out how to do it. But as you can see, the uh, executive vice president, let's see where it is, Brad Holmes, okay, and general manager. Okay, he base he's the guy. Okay, so even though he's general manager, this is what I'm talking about. You can hire a general manager, sort of like. Um, see, this is the whole reason why, by the way, Ray Agnew wants his own gig because he knows that Brad Holmes is calling the shots. But Brad, I mean, he's got what 20 years or so of experience uh, scouting and, and all that, and it being in the NFL. So it, it, he's basically running the team. Okay, he's the guy. So she made the right call. And that's exactly what needs to happen from Woody. I mean, look at Carolina, Tepper. How's that working out? Again, could be worse. He basically has, you know, but he himself into everything. And it hasn't worked out. I mean, the Saints don't have someone like, like a real president, but they got a general manager that's been there for 20 years. He was there for all the winning and the Super Bowl and the Sean Payton. And again, that is different. It's like the Packers. You know, the Packers, they don't even have an owner. Okay. But they have Mark Murphy, who's the president. Okay. Now, Gudenkus is the GM, but Murphy, I mean, this guy, I mean, he's been there for a long time. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and pop on his resume because there's a couple of things you get to see here. See, look at this. Even before he took the job with the Packers, he was an athletic director in college. This was his alma mater. 10 years there, five years with the Big Ten school, and then he gets the job with the Packers. So he knew how to run an organization, a sports organization, before he now runs the Packers. All right, so that's how it works. And again, we're going to go through them all, but that's the thing. So you, so the ones where you go, you know, see, not everybody has, but the people who don't have uh, people who are football people running their organizations are the are they usually the, the, the ones or are the ones that are just, they're like the Jets. It's not done correctly. So if you want to like somebody to give you the, well, not everybody has a football guy running the, all right, well, who has, who, who doesn't that actually is uh, successful? Give me that. And they can't do it. And even if you could find one, what is that one? But you can't, there are none. Okay. I mean, uh, who, who's uh, the most, uh, uh, the most uh, successful team right now, the Chiefs, right? Well, Mark Donovan, take a look at Mark Donovan. Now, 
I don't think Mark has an impressive resume. Matter of fact, he has a very similar uh, resume. Might even be to, to like the Jet dudes, sales, marketing, branding, things that. That's not what. That's not a football guy. Okay, but Clark Hunt. Okay, Clark. He learned from Lamar, one of the pioneers in the NFL. He learned. He so th that's what made him a success. That's what he did in his in his in his in, to be a successful businessman was to know how to run a football organization. So that that's why if somebody wants to point out someone like Mark Donovan, well, talk about Clark Hunt. Okay, because Clark Hunt knows what he's doing compared to Woody Johnson, has that experience. You know, Woody didn't come to the Jets because his father owned the Jets and he and he and he was with the Jets for 20 years and then learned how to run a football team and now I'm the owner. Didn't happen to Woody. All right. So I don't need to go on and on, but that's what something I just wanted to bring out. And that is why I think it is totally uh the number one criteria for the Jets this offseason is to find somebody who can run the team. And I'm not just talking GM. Okay, that's important. Now, coaching candidates. Tannenbaum is going to be the guy, right? Certainly looks that way. I know he's only going to recommend, but I mean, I think I'm going to be pretty shocked if we hear Woody Johnson hiring someone that Mike Tannenbaum didn't recommend. But whatever the case may be, let's talk about Vrabel. This is important because um, – you know, Jet fans know that Vrabel uh, is someone who could get the job. And as I said in my last video, it's not the path I want to go down unless Mike Vrabel, just like Belichick. I mean, again, if, if you're going to go down the path of defensive, on the defensive side, it's either Belichick or if you hire a Vrabel or an Aaron Glenn, I need to know. And this is what Woody needs to say. Again, I prefer Woody hired someone to have this mandate and not Woody. But what needs to be said is, is before I hire you, since you're a defensive head coach, what is your plan for offense? And if you don't answer the question the way that you need it to be answered, then I can't hire you. Okay. I can't hire you. If you're going to be bringing in someone on the offensive side without some sort of track record or without some sort of stability Whatever the case, but I, I, I we can't, we can't do it again, okay? Because this is what we've done for the for forever, and it hasn't worked. We need somebody on offense to teach the offensive side, and especially the quarterback position, and whatever young quarterback this team goes after, it has to be the right guy to teach these these kids how to play, especially a quarterback. So, if Rabel. Let's say Vrabel's the guy. And I have no problem with Mike Vrabel. Matter of fact, I would be happy if Mike Vrabel was the head coach. Again, as long as he hired the right offensive guy. So who could he hire? Well, I think as crazy and funny as this sounds, I could see a situation if Mike Vrabel becomes the head coach of the New York Jets where he hires someone by the name of Jason Vrabel who is not related to him. But Jason is someone who has a position right now with the Green Bay Packers. Uh, I might even pop this on the board here again. I took it off. But uh, and I mean, let me go ahead and do that. Pop it back on the screen. So Jason, as you can see here, he's the best in game coordinator for the Packers. Okay. So Jason. A little bit of a resume background here, if you could take a look at it. All right. So you look at here, oh, he's been around a long time. He's got a lot of positions over here and so forth. But look at this. First of all, he, he does have a jet background. Uh, the other thing that's important is this. When he was in Green Bay right here as wide receivers coach, do you know who he tutored to be the – uh, best wide receiver in football. It's obvious right now. Devontae Adams. And Devontae Adams will be here with the Jets next year. 
And I think that's why it makes a lot of sense. You might say, well, where'd you just come from with that? Well, keep in mind that in his first year, when Vabral was the head coach of Tennessee, his offensive coordinator was Matt LaFleur, the head coach of the Packers. So unless they have some sort of uh, bad blood between them that I don't know about, uh, and it's usually not the case, then there are ties there with the Packers staff. And so you have someone that is not going anywhere. You're an offensive guy. You're on the Packers. You know who the boss is. So anybody that wants to get a really top position to call plays, run the offense, going to have to leave Green Bay. And Vrabel would have to leave Green Bay. Now, can he be a coordinator? Well, I think that's possible. How funny would that be, by the way, to have a Vrabel and a Vrabel, and they're not even related. But keep that in mind. I think that is a position right there that makes a lot of sense. And, and that's where I would say, okay, if that is where you're going, I, I, I might buy into that. That makes a lot of sense. It's coached with Devontae Adams, knows that deal. And by the way, if he was coaching there with Devontae, you know who else was there. Now, I bring up Aaron because this is also important. I think this, all of this stuff, I didn't even, I didn't watch or listen to any of it this past week leading up to the Miami game because I'm just so sick of it. You know, now that they're losing and they just keep losing. And if he doesn't play well, I mean, they're just going to trash Aaron like nuts. And it's just so boring. It just is. Just, just the best thing, I, best advice I can have is if, if you hear this kind of stuff, just, just put this mental, you know, block here. Well, not block, but to put this mental note here that says, all right, if this is what, this is how you're going to play this game with Aaron. And I know exactly what, I know what the deal is here. I know, I know, I know what you, I know what you're, what you're really more uh, interested in, but cause you're not interested in the truth. You're just interested in slamming someone and making, making a story. I, I, I'm, just, I'm up to here with, with all this criticism and value. You can criticize Aaron for a lot of stuff, but would you, when you, when you just don't know, and I've said this before, just go to my, my other videos. And again, Take a look at how the players responded to Aaron, what they think of Aaron on the Jets before you come out with some nutty thing about how Aaron Rodgers is all about Aaron Rodgers. And, 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 and therefore, if that's the case, and I guess everybody on the team knows it, that he must be a prima donna. And if that's the case, well, then why would anybody like a prima donna? So, you know, who, who do you trust? Do you trust, again, go back to one of my recent videos on the channel. It's on Prime Sports Network. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description for one of the videos. And you can check it out for yourself. Again, do you believe what you see and hear? Or do you believe a, a writer's rumor about something that was said or, or watched or, or, or heard? I'd rather I see it and I hear it. That's what I believe. All right. So anyway. So this is important to note because there's going to be a question the Jets are going to have to face next year with whoever comes onto the organization. GM runs the team, whatever. And that is, okay, what do we do with this quarterback position? Now, there are a few options. One is that you're going to try to go out and get someone at free agency, someone that you think maybe can re-establish uh, themselves. Like, for instance, let's just say Sam Darnold was someone else other than Sam Darnold. He might be the perfect type of quarterback that the Jets would want to bring in. But obviously, you're not bringing Sam Darnold back to New York. So, but that would be what you would want. Now, are there any players like that out there? I don't think so. Or, hey, maybe the Minnesota Vikings like Sam Darnold so much that they're willing to trade J.J. McCarthy. Did you ever think of that? So, there are some options out there that are going to be available. Or... The most obvious, the NFL draft. So let's just stick with the draft because that is the most likely obvious. The Jets go in, they need to draft the quarterback. I'm sorry, and this includes Shadur Sanders. There is not one quarterback in this draft that should be playing his rookie season. Not even a down. I'm sorry, none of them. And and, and to me, I think uh, my favorite quarterback is Drew uh, Aller. He, he's my favorite. And there is no way that if he decides to come out this year, that he plays a down, he won't be able to play this year. He needs 
He might even need two years. All right. He might even need one of those Green Bay Packer deals, which is another reason why you might want to bring in someone from Green Bay because they know how it's done there. And therefore, you need a bridge gap quarterback. So that's why I say, look, it's going to come down to Taylor or Rodgers. Because you're, you're, you're not going to have them both. The Jets are not coming back next year with Rodgers and Taylor. It's going to be Rodgers or Taylor and their young quarterback. Now, it could, again, if they go down this draft route. And if it, what about Travis? Well, fine. Travis can hang out in the practice squad and, you know, they can manip, you know, find a way to manipulate his up and down the practice squad and the roster and keep him on the injured list, whatever. But, you know, that's not, that's not a, a, a very feasible option at this point. That's, that's just, let's we'll not even go down that road. So then it comes down to the quarterback who is going to be the bridge gap. As I was saying, and look, I I I don't know that the guy that comes in here might just say I need I can't have Aaron around here. He's too big of a distraction. Maybe even it's just just I I, I we need to just clean house here. Coach is gone. Entire staff is gone. Even Brant Boyer can go. By the way, I've I've kind of given up on Brant myself, and the reason I've decided to give up on Brant, and I said this in the preseason when he decided to go with a 38-year-old-ish punter uh, over a young, the one guy, the one team that brought this kid Riza in, this this golden boy uh, kid punter from uh, uh, the college, uh, and, and he had an opportunity to go that route, and he decided not to. And now the Chiefs have him. Of course the Chiefs have him. Now, I don't know if he's going to turn into anything special. You know, he's not having a sort of special year. But that, that, you know what? You gotta look. We have no young kicker. We have no young punter. In the, the primary job of the special teams coordinator at some point, you've been there for what, ever, is to groom a punter or a kicker, someone that that to become something, and you haven't done it. So you got to go. My mind. So just clean house, okay? And that might be what he does with Aaron. We need to clean house. All right, so Taylor, he's he's the guy that's going to be my bridge guy. All right, whatever. But there's also the possibility that it does not happen. And then the guy that comes in says, you know what, Aaron, if you want to play, so you're, we're going to be here for another year or two, that's fine. As long as you're playing well, and, and I've looked at the film, and, and maybe Aaron ends the season the way that he played on Sunday against Miami. Because if he does that, I think there'd be a lot more people that would be, oh, yeah, okay, maybe Aaron could come back next year. So there's still a lot of possibility of him not being here and being here. But I think, see, the difference between having Aaron here or Taylor is if Taylor's here, you're going to get at some point, you know, it's going to be late in the season, you know, and you're not, you're not really, the chances of the Jets going to the playoffs next year with Taylor at quarterback, it's just not very good. So if you really want to try to get to let's just hey if we could just get to the wild card next year, just somehow sneak in, because we have a talented team and now we have a really good coaching staff to coach these kids. Well, I got Aaron's got to be the guy. Okay, so if you go down that road, then yeah, you have to choose Aaron, and in that case, that might be what you do. And say okay, you know what, Aaron, I want you to be here for another year or two, and then so and so is going to learn under you for the next couple of years. And then he's taken over. And I have no problem with that at all. I think that's also, I think that's, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, what I don't want to see is some, some coach come in and we draft one of these quarterbacks in his draft class. And then you just go ahead and throw him in there day one or, or mid season because Taylor can't possibly, you know, cause you're three and eight seasons over. All right. You got to play this guy. You got to do something. Fans, fans need something. And it's too early. And the kid just mentally, we've been down on the road before. So, because again, I, I just, I'm sorry. None of these quarterbacks in this draft class should be playing in 2025 in the NFL. None of them. All right. So, and by the way, I don't even think that the Jets would be drafting any of these quarterbacks. Sorry. Unless they want to wait until the end of the first round by trading down or taking these guys in the second round. 
you, you have a, you have a talent issue uh, at quarterback, but you also have a few other positions you could use help, especially the offensive line could still use some more help because you got some age uh, at a couple spots. But what you have to do is not do anything dumb and use a top five or top six pick in the NFL draft on a quarterback that is a mid round, mid first round or second round talent. You can't do it. I don't care what the pressure is. And that's why you need to bring in and solidify your organization from, from the top. So you bring in the credentials at the top, the respect that the fans will have with the hire that you make. So when they talk like this and say, look, we're not going to draft a quarterback just because you think we should draft a quarterback. We're going to do what we think is best. We'll draft a quarterback if we believe he's worth it there. And then when the draft comes and goes and the Jets don't use up a, a pick in the first round, well, hey, that's just the way it is. We're not dumb enough to draft one that high, but we will draft them in the second round. Or maybe we'll swing a deal and move up and draft them in the mid to late first round. And that hopefully will be something done by someone that's smart running the organization. Okay, so uh, what about on defense? Well, Mike Vrabel has a defensive background. And um, I think it's obvious. Uh, it all depends on whether or not he's still going to be with Cleveland and that's Jim Schwartz. So uh, who knows? A lot of people were wondering if Schwartz was going to be around after the way the Browns uh, got the, dismantled in the wildcard game last year. Uh, so it is very possible that if Vrabel gets the job with the Jets, that Jim Schwartz might just, they might mutually agree to disagree and, you know, part ways or, you know, and then Jim becomes the defensive coordinator of the Jets. Um, but other than that, I don't have like a whole lot of other answers uh, as far as defensive coordinator. I, I will throw another crazy one out there, and this is just a crazy one. Uh, it's not going to happen, but... I'll throw in Ryan Day as offensive coordinator. And I'll say that because maybe Ryan Day uh, will resign from from Ohio State. He's done with it or he gets fired. And you might – look, he's probably going to get a head coaching job in the NFL or college, more than likely college. But he could get a head coaching job in the NFL. So you're saying, well, why would he be offensive coordinator? Well, who knows? I mean, look at Johnson in Detroit. I, I'm not. I don't. I'm not going somewhere just because I. I, I got to get a job. So maybe if Ryan is let go or leaves, whatever, maybe he there isn't a job out there that he's really in. Some people might just well, take a year off. That kind. Of, and then Mike Vrabel might say, "No, I'll take a year off. Come, just come help me out for a couple of years, year or two, even just a year. You know, the, teach 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 your assistant to to take over for you when you're gone, and come over here." You know, coach Aaron Rodgers for a year, you know, uh, be here for a couple of years, you know, get your, uh, get your uh, resume going again, you know, get some good, good graces going again. Um, and I wouldn't rule that out. I would, uh, of course they both have Iowa state backgrounds. That's why I say that anyway, but that's not going to happen. Um, now the other thing, and he, as we close out here, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the possible Aaron Glenn connection. Again, we're talking about the defensive coaches this time. So if the Jets go the Aaron Glenn deal, it's the same thing about looking at Johnson and saying, well, I guess Aaron, I guess if we're going to, if Aaron Glenn's going to be the head coach of the team, uh, then what does that mean? Well, then it means Tanner's coming with him, wouldn't it? Once again, you would think if Ben Johnson is pulling one of those, I'm not going anywhere deals and you have a meeting with Aaron Glenn, which I would guess the jets might, then that would be a great hire. Jet fans would love it, but who's your offensive coordinator? Well, I'll bring this guy with me. All right. So that could make a lot of sense. Once again, Agnew, Erin Strand, and do I have it here? Yeah. Aaron Glenn. So I could definitely see that as well. Um, now, look, I'm not trying to sit here and tell you that I think Tanner Ernst ran in some sort of Ben Johnson, but he's an option because he's learning from the best. And I think it's pretty foregone conclusion that if Ben Johnson does decide to leave, look, I'm not going to sit here. What are we going to sit here and talk about Ben Johnson for the Jets? I mean, that's the most easiest idea in the world. I will say this, though. I'm going to counter this 
with the, the people who were, because th- there's a lot of them out there. Oh, nobody worth anything is going to take over the head coaching job of the Jets. That is just so lame. Okay. Now, I can understand that they would not do that, but only if they weren't there with someone that they trusted that, that get the difference between the owner and their head coach position, who would that be? That would be, that, that's more important than the owner. Okay. So let's say the Jets don't hire a president. They don't hire someone that with a football background to run the team. And then, but they can hire someone, say Ray Agnew, and he's the GM. But let's say he doesn't have you know the final word and what he still does. Well, Ben Johnson is not going to say no to the Jets because of the Jets and because Woody's going to get the last word. He tr- he'll trust Ray Agnew. That's his guy. That's the only guy he has to worry about. And then they would come together and, and, and there you go. And the other thing is, is that it's New York. Okay. I mean, y- you know how, uh, um, you know, really bad you'd have to be as far as an owner, like really bad. I mean, you have to be one of these owners, like like Tepper, guys like that. So far, Tepper. Again, he might eventually as well. Maybe he he, he finally made the right hires, GM, head coach, quarterback. Maybe it's finally going to work out for him too. But the fact is, is that you don't, the Jets are not run by some megalomaniac uh, who is is has done has never been successful, sort of like Snyder. Okay, Dan Snyder. He's a perfect example. It's it, it's not like that. All right. And then you're you're with the Jets, okay? And maybe more importantly, the Jets roster. Because you're gonna come to the team, you're gonna say, okay, does the owner want to spend money? Is he is he want to win? Yes. Uh, where am I? New York. How's the team? Do they have the personnel? Yes. Obviously, because the Jets have been favored so many times this year when they didn't deserve to be favorite, when they kept losing, they were favored in Pittsburgh for crying out loud. Don't forget about that. And why? Not just because of Aaron Rodgers, because the talent on the team is there. They're a talented football team. They're just the worst coach team in the league. Okay? So that's why they have all these losses. And that's the other thing. Oh, it's going to take us another three or four years. Oh, it's just the losing and the losing and the losing. The fact that you saw what happened, you saw the um, uh, uh, the information that came out. Uh, I forget who who put it out. It might have been the Athletic. I think it was, and they talked about the recent uh, uh, situation with the Jets, like the the rut they're in right now. And here it is, in case you didn't know. There were six games in which they had the ball late in the fourth quarter with a chance to win. They've lost all six. They've lost three consecutive games in which they went into the fourth quarter with a lead, including on Sunday. They were up eight. They've lost five games this season in which they held the lead in the fourth quarter, a new team record. Okay. What is that telling you? I'm telling you right now what it's telling you, that they're this close. They're a coach away. They're 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 stability away. They're the right hire away. And that includes if they want to stick with Aaron. That's all. That's what that is. That's how quickly it can change. Let's look at the LA Chargers. I said this before. And they're even in better shape because the Chargers were never in games like the Jets are this year. The Jets are the exact opposite of the Chiefs. The Chiefs, you would think they would lose every game or six games the way that they played. And yet they've won them all. And the Jets, instead of winning all those games, lost. They didn't even go three and three. They went 0 and six. They're this close from turning it around because this is a talented football team. And so any head coach that looks at this roster is going to go, well, this isn't going to take long. And especially if you're someone as smart as, say, if you want to just say Ben Johnson, but any coordinator that's worth anything, any offensive guy that's worth anything is going to say, I can make this work. Hey, I've got an ego. I know what I'm doing. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll work if I'll, I'll help you find the right quarterback. Heck, I, I was able to change Jared Goff's career. I could change anybody's career here. So I'm telling you, don't listen to the media. This is a good job. The Jets are not going to have to hire some nobody because anybody worth anything is not coming. And I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's about all we wanted to wrap up today. I think it was important 
to talk about uh, Vrabel and Glenn being defensive guys because that's not the direction I want to go. As I said on the last video, offense is the way I want to go. Uh, but again, if you go defense, it's all about finding the right coordinator on offense. It has to be a package deal. You have to know what's going on there on offense. It has to. You can't hire Mike Vrabel. Fail to hire any in between. You, you, you know, the, the Jaime's of the world are still running the show as president. And then you wind up hiring, I don't know, who's your offensive coordinator? Hey, you know what? Maybe you stick with Todd Downing because they were together for uh, matter of fact, when, when they were together, Downing and uh, Vrabel, they went 12 and five one year. That's not bad. 12 and five. And they won a division title with, with Downing as the offensive coordinator. So, but that's, you know, I mean, do you see anything from Downing? Now, I, I like what I see from Downing lately. I will say that. I like the fact that now he's finally starting to use both running backs in the backfield, which he did not do earlier this season. So uh, there is some progress going there in offense. So I'm not, I'm not saying it would be the worst idea, but you do have to consider that. You'd have to consider that Mike Vrabel gets hired and he keeps Downing on his offensive coordinator. Uh, again, I that's not the road I want to go down. But like I said in the beginning, if you hire Mike Vrabel, it's not the worst idea in the world. I'll I'll hope, uh, and uh, and and I think I hope it'll work. Um, and 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 it could be a lot worse. That's the way I'm going to look at it. But again, I believe the home run is you hire someone like a Ponte, Don Aponte, and then you you bring in, you go from there. You bring in a GM with credentials an offensive guy, either a head coach or coordinator that knows what they're doing. And, um, and then you make the right decisions when it really matters the most around the draft, but most importantly, a quarterback, because the jets are a, they're, they're, they're a found a sound coaching staff away. And, and look, Mike Vrabel has done one thing to prove that he knows how to coach. He was the one guy out of all the Belichick assistants that knew how to beat him. And that's saying something. Okay. Cause we couldn't beat him and we weren't even, we didn't even have ex assistants. We can never beat Belichick. Well, they will know how to beat Belichick. And that's saying something. So that's why I think you have to give him the benefit of the doubt, even if you don't get everything that you want out of a variable hire. Um, but that's, that's what you're dealing with. And like I said, I mean, you know, if you if you bring in a legitimate coach who knows how to coach, it's going to turn this team around really fast. But don't think that if you bring in Vrabel, like I said with Aaron Rodgers, don't think it's like, all right, yeah, we got to get rid of Rodgers and we'll just let Taylor be the quarterback and then we'll go draft the quarterback. You're 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 all at the, all you're doing at that point now is you are losing for sure next year. And then you are keeping your fingers crossed that in 26, that the young quarterback that steps into the role is the right kid. That's all you're doing. And then, and then you're leaving it up to say, who knows? Again, I don't know who's the offensive quarterback. Is it Todd Downing? Is he the guy that you're going to entrust with the young quarterback? Because he has never proven to elevate any young quarterbacks in Tennessee or here. Obviously, he hasn't had the role. He had Tannehill. And by the way, keep this in mind, too. When Vrabel lost it in Tennessee, when, when the momentum was lost in Tennessee, it was because of the trade for A.J. Brown. That was when everything really fell apart uh, for Vrabel and the Titans. It was the dumb decision to let A.J. Brown go. Um, I know that th there's another offensive guy also, before I go, keep in mind, and that is a guy who was the offensive coordinator for Vrabel when he was there the first time the very first year was Arthur Smith. And of course, Arthur Smith was like a, supposedly a, a, a candidate, a short candidate for the jet job. He goes to Atlanta. The rest of his history, he's now the uh, officer coordinator of Pittsburgh. Uh, Arthur Smith should not be head coach next year. Okay. Arthur Smith needs to be in Pittsburgh for about two or three more years, successful years first. Have success in Pittsburgh for several more years, then you can get another gig. But Arthur Smith is not ready for a head coaching job, not after the way he looked in Atlanta. Okay, so there you go. That's what I think. And uh, I just think you need to be positive about it. 
uh, stay away from all the bad, stupid, downer rumors. And look, I think the best thing in the world as a Jet fan was what happened on Sunday. You were, it, was a, it was a fun game to watch. The offense looked as good as it looked all year. Uh, it, it was a good game. I mean, you know, and there was no without sauce, and it was a good game. And by the way, is it nice to have uh, our middle linebacker of the future? C.J. Mosley, you have seen the last of the New York Jet uniform. Bye-bye. So Sherwood is definitely the man to take over there. You have Sherwood and Quincy Williams at linebacker taking over with Quinn and Williams and McDonald. And uh, I guess uh, Reddick's going to be back next year, I would guess. I mean, I have no idea what to get to do there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there's this, and then Jermaine Johnson comes back, man, it's going to be a good defense already next year. So, uh, there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, it's not as bad as you think. And just, you know what, just keep rooting for what happened on Sunday, root for an interesting game, a fun game, uh, root for the offense. Cause the, we know the defense will be good. So just root for the offense to play well and, uh, losing is okay. Because the winning doesn't matter. It doesn't. Uh, the losing, though, guarantees a much better spot uh, for the draft. And that's exactly what we really need to be keeping an eye on. And make sure to check out the RLS Football YouTube channel because we're going to be talking about all the NFL draft 2025 top prospects. And so you want to keep an eye on that. We'll have links in the description for it. Let me know what you think about uh, what we just talked about here. That's very important. Uh, you can leave a comment in the comment uh, area, of course. Uh, let us know. Uh, subscribe like, and share to our new channel here at ProLine TV. Uh, I'm also posting this video on my uh, channel, Prime Sports Network. So please make sure to uh, follow us here though over at ProLine TV, because this is where we're gonna be uh, having a, a lot of our videos posted. And we're trying to build something really cool here at ProLine TV. And so uh, if you guys can come over here, that'd be great. So uh, we'll see you guys again uh, sometime, not sure when, probably, uh, when we get a new coach, or new GM and all that stuff, uh, I think that'll be it for now for the regular season. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it because uh, Black Monday, uh, that whole week should be exciting for Jet fans. We're going to get a new uh, a new leader of this organization. I'm going to get a new head coach. And so uh, we're going to have to just uh, be very, very hopeful and pray that uh, Woody makes the right calls. And if he does, uh, then uh, this thing can be turned around really fast. So um, you know, we got to deal with it for another four games, uh, one more month to go. And then, uh, hopefully we'll have some fun this off season. So, uh, we'll be here to talk about it. So you can uh, bet you on that and, uh, stay positive.